This is Rousby Wolf with my Automatic Train Station tutorial. A viewer of my Automatic Train Station video asked that I show a tutorial on how I made it, and so that's what I'm hoping to do here. Now, if you'll notice, I've um, I made a small tabletop railroad to help illustrate how the Automatic Train Station works and to show you the circuitry and how to set it up. Um, for illustration purposes, I've made the train station out of wood and the rest of the railroad out of stone. Now, if you notice, the cart is now circling the railroad and entering the train station. Now it's going up track number three. And the next time it comes in, it's going to be directed up track number one. And the next time it enters, it's going to be directed up track number two. And then track number three. Now these are very short loops, each one of these different tracks, but each of these tracks could be as large as your world. You could have one of these tracks going around the northern hemisphere, and one around the southern hemisphere, one around the ocean. And you also are not limited to three tracks. This system will work with any number of tracks. You could have four, you could have five, you could have twenty, you could have a hundred, you could have a thousand tracks. It doesn't matter. You can make as many as you want. But one feature that you do have to have is that all the track loops, no matter how big they are, <coughs> excuse me, have to enter the, tr the rail station on a single main line. So somewhere in their travels, each one of these tracks has to be tied into this main line to enter the station. Now before we get down to talking about the circuitry, I want to uh, point out one elementary uh, feature of, of Minecraft Railroads for those of you who are new to it. And that is a corner. If you bring a, a, a track into the back of a corner, it will the, the minecart will go straight across the corner as you're seeing it do here. And this is very important if you want to bring two tracks together into a single track. This is the easiest way to do it. Just drive across the corner and, and, and then the tracks are brought together. And this feature also works with a switching track. Notice the switch here is nothing more than a corner. But the corner is being switched so that and the next time the cart comes around, it'll drive across the back of the corner and thus go straight. And then when it's flipped around, this time it will direct the cart up the number one track. And then over here, it's going to direct the cart up the number two track. All right, let's take a look at the cir circuitry that makes all this possible. Before we actually discuss the redstone circuitry, I want to look at uh, two features of redstone that are important to understanding the circuit. One of them is putting a redstone torch on the side. It's important to specify the side of a block. Now I'm using stone block. You can use dirt or wool or any other kind of block you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter. And then uh, the, a redstone circuit placed on the side opposite the redstone torch here creates a circuit that has multiple useful functions. Notice when I excite this redstone circuit that the torch takes on the opposite condition. When the redstone circuit is off, the torch is uh, on, the torch is off, and when the redstone circuit is off, the torch is on. Now, one of the features that we get out of this is it reverses the information or reverses the state of the redstone circuit. Notice that this redstone I placed in front of this, the torch takes on the condition of the torch. When the torch is on, the circuit's on. When the torch is off, the circuit's off. So you can use this to reverse uh, redstone power information. But here's another important feature, and this is a repeater. The repeater has multiple, if you're going to be doing a lot of red, uh, Minecraft circuits, the repeater has multiple functions, all of them very useful. But I'm only going to discuss two of those functions here today. And one of them is the diode function. You'll notice a faint arrow pointing towards the redstone lantern here. And what that does is it tells us the direction of redstone power can flow from the switch to the lantern. When I turn the switch off, the lantern goes off, turn the switch on, the lantern comes on. But if I were to reverse this diode, so now it's pointing at the switch, notice redstone power cannot pass the diode to get to the lantern. No matter how many times I turn it on and off, the lantern will not be turned on because it's pointing back and will not allow this information to pass in that direction. It will only allow information to pass in this direction, the direction of the arrow. It's a very important feature that we are going to be using today in our automatic train circuit. Now what I'm going to do to show you how to build one of these is I'm first going to break one apart. I didn't mean to dig that hole so I'll just put a block there instead. I'm going to get rid of all the elements in this circuit like so. 
And for starters, I'm going to put a switch here. Now notice this is manual switch. When I put power on this corner, the corner turns to direct the minecart up the number one track. When I take power off of it, it changes it to direct the cart away from the number one track and then onto the two and three tracks. So on, it's directed up the track. Off, it's directed away from the track. On, off. Now, if you had a friend standing here, that would be fine. Or if you wanted to stop your cart and get out and change the track, then you could do that. But that's not what this video is about. We want it to perform this function automatically. So let's do that. Oops, wrong place. For starters, I'm going to put a redstone torch underneath it. Now, I like to, when I build a train station, I like the riders of my train station to admire the architecture, to admire the scenery around my railroad. I don't want them to see a big mishmash of redstone circuits. Maybe you do, but that's your personal taste. I personally like to hide my redstone circuits underneath my station. So one of the features here we're going to discuss is how to pass information through the floor of your train station. The first bit of information we want is know how to get from the circuit underneath your station up to the switch. And you do that with a redstone torch. Notice the redstone torch is below the switch and the switch is excited and is directing the cart down the number one path. If I get rid of the torch, now it directs the cart away from the number one path because this, the, the switching track is de-energized. Torch energized, goes up the path, no torch, de-energized, goes away from the number one path. So the torch passes information up through the floor to change our track. Now the other thing is, is how do we get information from the button rail down to the redstone circuit? Well, every time the cart runs over the button rail, it excites this little blob of redstone directly underneath it. Now notice there's a one block distance from the redstone, the button rail to the redstone. If I made that two blocks, no amount of running over that button will ever excite it. It has to be exactly one block, which is why I put it up here on the block. There we are. Do that. Yep, oh, there it's excited. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a block here and I'm going to connect that to our redstone torch. Now notice, here again, the reverse feature. When this circuit is excited by the button, the torch will go off. When this circuit is off, the torch is on. It takes on the exact opposite state. Over the button, off the button. On the button, off the button. And then that information is passed up to the track. And notice the track changes as the cart runs over the button. But this doesn't really help us because <laughs> the redstone circuit is only excited for the amount of time that the cart is actually over the button. And that's not enough time for the cart to get around the track and back to the switch. So it keeps changing and the cart is subsequently stuck going around the number two track. So what we're going to do now is we're going to provide a feedback loop. I'm going to put a block here in front of the redstone torch, put a little glob of redstone on it. Now notice that this stripe of redstone takes on the condition of the torch. The torch is on, the redstone is excited, the torch is off, the redstone is off. Now we're going to use that information for a feedback loop back here to the beginning. The problem is, is it's in the wrong direction. So what am, I, what am I going to do? Since I can't, whoops, that's not what I wanted. I want a block. I want to put a torch on it. I need to reverse that information. So we're going to bring it off the side here, bring it to the back of the block, and then connect it to this information. Now here's the problem with the feedback loop. Oh, now we've got the opposite problem. It's stuck in the off condition. Now the cart is stuck going past the number one track and will not go to it. So we need something to reset it. And that's where this comes in. I'm going to put a diode right here pointing toward the number one circuit. And then I'm going to connect it in. Now what that does, the reset feature, is notice when it runs over the number three button, it excites this path and resets both number one and two. Watch number one. It's now de-energized, so it directs the cart to number two. Number two is de-energized, so it directs the cart to number three. Now when it runs over the number three button, it's going to excite this redstone path, and that's going to come around and reset both number one and two and turn them on. Number one turns itself off, directs the cart to number two, 
turns itself off, directs the card to number three. Number three resets number one and two. Now it's important here that both circuits number one and two are identical. If you can build this circuit for number one, it's the exact same circuit for number two. And if you had 15 tracks, then one through 14 would all have this identical circuit. And the final track, in this case number three, is nothing more than a reset. It's just a block with a redstone path directly underneath the button. And when it's excited, it sends that excitation into the backs of these diodes to reset all the other tracks. If this were a 15 rail system, this would be rail number 15, and it would, it would excite and reset 1 through 14, the same way that number 3 is resetting 1 and 2. Now, here's another repeater, and I, this is the other feature of a repeater that's important. Notice, when we run over number 3 next time, that this that this redstone path is going to be red and bright and full of energy, but down here it's going to be weak. As a matter of fact, it's going to be dark, and it isn't even going to be able to reset number one. Watch. Oh, see how the it didn't make it? Number one did not get reset. That's the problem. Redstone circuits are only good for about 10 or 12 blocks. The redstone gurus can tell you exactly how far that is. I usually just estimate about 10 or 12. What the other feature that a repeater does is it serves as a power booster. It will take the signal, a redstone signal, amplify it so that you can send it greater distances. Now, when it runs over number three, there it is. It reset number one and number two. So remember, create this circuit for as many tracks as you have. If you have two, three, four, 100, 150, they would all have this identical circuit except the very last one. If you had 100 tracks, 1 through 99 would have this circuit, and the 100th track would be nothing more than a reset block like this. Well, there you are. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope this helps you make your own automatic train station. If you have any difficulties or comments, please add them below, and I will try to answer what I can and help you with any problems you're having. And if you make your own train station and want to share it, I would love to see it. Well, this is Rousey Wolf, Wolf signing off, and I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it.